Hey, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm looking at the advanced feature in Orca Slicer, Extrusion Rate Smoothing. So let's go ahead and get started. So to start off, what is extrusion rate smoothing? In Prusa Slicer as the pressure equalizer. And basically it aims to limit the rate of extrusion volume change when it's below a certain threshold. Basically in simplest terms, it helps the printer, work slicer in particular, figure out how much plastic needs to be pushed out. You can think of it as instead of jamming on the brakes of your car, you can think of it as slowly and gently applying pressure. So basically, as the printer slows down, extrusion rate smoothing is a gentle on-ramp that basically smooths out the stop and start of the extrusion when it hits that speed change. And the speed changes are typically when you have bridges or corners. And part of this goes right with pressure advance, which I'll talk about in a minute. Now, why would you want to use extrusion rate smoothing? Well, particularly when you're printing at high speed and pushing a lot of plastic, it leads to more consistent extrusion throughout the print. It can help basically eliminate or reduce inconsistency when there's speed changes in corners. It aids pressure advance to achieve better results. And lastly, it contributes to much smoother surface finishes. The mechanics of extrusion rate smoothing is basically, as I mentioned, as your printer is printing, it's constantly speeding up and slowing down. And this is especially true when you have things like corners and overhangs. These speed changes require the printer to also change the amount of plastic it's pushing at any given time. Sudden changes require the extrusion rate to change and it can be difficult for the both the extruder and the firmware to handle it precisely. And if it can't handle it precisely, you'll wind up with artifacts, bumps, and bulges throughout your print, especially true when you're printing at high speeds and accelerations. And as I mentioned previously, BRS creates speed ramps by telling the printer to slightly slow down before it changes the pressure and how much plastic's being pushed and then change slowly on when it starts to speed up. And basically, changing the way the extrusion is done by breaking into smaller, more manageable chunks over time periods and distance. So instead of, again, pressing those brakes and jamming on the brakes to stop suddenly, we're just applying it very gently. Also should be noted that this basically makes it easier for the extruder to keep up with the demands, reducing the chances to have those unwanted artifacts. Now your printer's firmware has what's called a motion planner and the motion planner and pressure advance work together. The motion planner is responsible for interpreting speed changes and commands that come out of the slicer and translates those into motor movements. So when a speed change is requested, pressure advance, it looks in advance and calculates the necessary slowdown to reach the target speed. And the rate of slowdown is limited by the move's acceleration value. Now pressure advance looks ahead at speed changes and tells the extruder to push a little more or a little less filament depending on the actual speed change. Notice allows the pressure in the nozzle to be more aligned with printing speed resulting in better and more higher quality prints. Pressure advance, just like extrusion smoothing, translates to sharper corners, reduced stringing and oozing, more consistent extrusion throughout the print, and improved print quality at higher speeds. So the extrusion rate smoothing works in conjunction with both the motion planner and pressure advance. So your motion planner is your driver of your 3D printer and decides what speed to slow down. Pressure advance is like a co-pilot who basically helps you anticipate when there's going to be a speed change and tells the driver when to apply the gas or lay off the gas and how to adjust. Extrusion rate smoothing sort of regulates that traffic from the co-pilot and helps create an on-ramp that slowly ramps up and slowly ramps down how much pressure is being put through the filament 
to drive it. Why is all this needed? Because sometimes the motion planner calls for a very sudden speed change, and pressure advance would do would equally make a sudden change. And both of those factors together would lead to blobs and artifacts throughout your print. Let's take a look at the extrusion rate smoothing within Orca Slicer. So you can see I've opened up Orca Slicer, and if I look down here at my process parameters, let's click over onto speed. And if I scroll down the bottom, here's the extrusion rate smoothing, here's the segment link, and then Here's also a setting to apply to external features only. Now, to come up with these values, you have two sources. One is you can go to the wiki for Orca Slicer, and they have some sample values here and some suggested values that you can use. So I've added an equation to my Clipper Calibration spreadsheet. You'll find a link in the video description. And so let's fill in the values and sort of calculate what the max ERS would be. In Orca Slicer, I'm going to scroll up here. And again, on the speed and the process parameters, outer wall is 3,000. So that's the max acceleration for my external walls. Go over to my spreadsheet, and I'm going to type in 3,000. Now, my line width, and look into the Orca Slicer, I can see that under the quality, and the outer wall is actually set to 0.6. So let's go over the spreadsheet and type in 0.6. Now I can also tell you my layer height is set to 0.2. So my max ERS is set to 360. If I go over this value, that's too aggressive. So the documentation, particularly over on the Orca Slicer Wiki, suggests starting at an experimental value between 60 and 80%. So you can see those calculations right here. And in fact, let's make those bold so they stand out a little bit better. So I want to start, in my case, I'll probably start around, let's say, 260. So I'll start with an ERS of 260 in my slicer. So let's go over here, scroll down on speed, and just change this to 260. And I can test this value and play around with it and see what it does. Now, this will change the speed of the print. I can also click to apply this only to external features. In my case, really all that I care about is having that smooth look and having no blobs on the outer surface. Right now, I've just set the extrusion rate smoothing to 260, and I feel pretty good about that. Now I can start my tests and see which works better for me. There's a couple things to note about this value in Orca Slicer. The lower the value, the more aggressive the smoothing will be. And the higher the value, the less smoothing there will be. Now, if I go over my max value, there's no returns. It won't use it, and basically nothing will happen. So it won't make any changes. So I always want this extrusion rate smoothing to be below my max. Now, some other things to think about on when you need to adjust this. You need to use this when you're printing at high accelerations and large flow rates. On my Voron, I am printing fast, so I have a high acceleration. And then I'm using a Bamboo X1 hot end with a high flow rate. And so that's a good time to use it. I also, when I have pressure advanced set, particularly in Clipper, I want to use that. Now for Bowden printers, you probably want that extrusion rate smoothing to be a lower number, particularly when you're looking at using flexible filaments or soft PLAs. And you'd want this to be a small number because you want to be very aggressive. Now with direct drive printers, you can afford to use a higher value because the direct drive probably has better contact and is holding the filament more tightly. Now you need to look at this value whenever you're changing the acceleration, and you probably also need to look at it whenever you're noticing printer inconsistencies. Now keep in mind, this is a user-determined value, value, so you want to experiment and try different things some potential downsides and considerations you need to make. Potentially, this could affect print time, so it could increase it. Now, if I slice here, this was taken one hour, 16 minutes, so it hasn't changed the speed any or the time it takes to print. In some cases, and this is very rarely, you might actually lose some fine detail, particularly with overhangs and things might be over smooth. 
And then lastly, I just need to point out, extrusion rate smoothing does not help if your printer is not properly calibrated. And if you need to properly calibrate your printer, I'll link to a video above. So just to wrap up, keep in mind that the ERS value defines the maximum rate of change for extruded plastic. It doesn't change the extrusion speed itself. Start with the recommended values that are 60 or 80% of the maximum theoretical value and increment by 10%. If you're using a Bowden tomb and flexible filaments, start with low rates, direct drives, printers, you can start with higher ERS values. You review how your overhangs look because that's where you're definitely going to see the effect of this setting. Make sure you don't exceed the limits. Your max extrusion rate smoothing, once you go over that, that top value doesn't do anything. So it won't change anything with your printer. And then also, if you're using Clipper, make sure you set your pressure advance before you start playing around with this setting. So hopefully you found this helpful. I realize I'm not showing much on the screen. I, it's very hard to discuss this stuff, but hopefully you understand what I'm talking about. If you have any questions or comments, post it below. I'm also going to link to some of my other Orca Slicer playlists, so that way you can see other calibrations and related videos I've put together. Again, thank you for your time, and hopefully I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks. Have a good day.